Welcome to the Whole Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you become a fat burner, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey guys, it's Debbie Potts. I'm the host of the Whole Athlete Podcast. And this is my Thursday special edition of my show that I call Real Thoughts with Debbie Potts, where I talk about different topics that I think about on my bike rides, that I see and hear happening on social media, and questions from you, our listeners. Today's topic is a blog I wrote the other day called, What If You Don't Lose Weight During an Endurance Event? (laughs) So if you yourself as myself, have done endurance events and think that you'll lose weight because, wow, we're burning 10 calories going for a long bike ride or a long run. And if you go by the old math that we were taught that if you burn off 3,500 calories or have a calorie deficit of 3,500 calories, you will lose one pound of weight. Well, I know that's not true because I started doing Ironmans back in 2001 and raced until 2012 on and off. And then I, before that, even was doing marathons and doing long distance cycling events in Seattle to Portland and right around Mount Rainier one day. You know, at first I started to lose weight, but I didn't lose that much weight for how many calories I was burning. So I started thinking about that theory that we'd lose a pound of weight for how many calories you burn off early on and I started to dabble without knowing it into metabolic efficiency and trying to figure out how do you lose weight if I'm doing a long bike ride long run training for a marathon triathlon trail run that's over two three hours how am I supposed to lose weight if one I'm told to eat all these calories and high carb meal before I work out and have heavy dinner the night before and then every hour I'm supposed to have three 500 calories of carbohydrates with a liquid drink or and a gel or a bar so I started years ago I remember the day and I actually just went past this tree that I went on my first long bike ride I passed this tree on the same route I did last weekend this was about 20 years ago now but I thought well why should I have all this calories I have fat to burn off so I'm just gonna go for a bike ride after I taught spin class and not eat anything and see what happens well (laughs) It wasn't so good. I bonked because I was a sugar burner. My typical breakfast that I thought was so healthy because I was fat free. I had a banana, orange juice, and bagel back in those days and thought that was so good for me. And then I taught spin class this one specific Saturday. And then I went to go meet friends to go for a long bike ride as we're training for our first Seattle to Portland bike ride. So yeah, this was about 20 years ago. I'm getting older. And I remember I had no energy. I had to stop and actually had a little nap on the side of the road at uh, Enum Cloth Fairgrounds under a tree. And they continued going up Mud Mountain Dam, the same route I just happened to do this last Saturday. And someone gave me a cliff bar, which has about 50 grams of carbs in it. And I came back to life. Well, not knowing what I know now, I was a complete sugar burner and I wasn't able to just switch over one day from being a sugar burner to a fat burner and as we know now we're learning about metabolic flexibility and becoming fat adapted that it takes two three weeks more or less depending on how much of a carb burner you are and how medically metabolically damaged you are so if you read dr mercola's uh, fat is a new fuel book if you read his new book keto fasting uh, Dr. Maffetone's books and Volick and Finney, which were way ahead of the time. Their books are, you know, 10, 20 years old now. Dr. Maffetone was way on top of this. Bob Sebehor, USA Triathlon, he taught us in 2009. I took his seminar and said, you know, why do you need to have these gels every hour? You should be metabolically efficient if you're doing endurance training and burn fat. 
not carbohydrates. And he got rid of what everyone else is telling us to do is have those three 500 calories every hour. And as you train to be a fat burning athlete, well, you should lose weight and burn fat instead of carbohydrates. You don't need to eat as much. You don't have that GI distress from eating all those gels and blocks and sugary drinks. And everybody was right. I figured this out myself back in early 2003, maybe. And 2005 started being um, new metabolic efficiency testing on people. I was using new leaf equipment at the health club I was working at and learning about how chronic stress, as I look back, I didn't know this at the time, impacted people's ability to burn fat. I could test people on the treadmill to see where their fat burning zones were based on heart rate. But I, I started to see this trend when people would come in after work, they were in traffic, they were late to our session because of traffic, and they were not burning fat at all. They were just burning sugar. So now, knowing what I know now about how every stress response is a blood sugar response, and all this information I've learned over the years as a nutritional therapist, and Ben Greenfield's Keon coach, and Paul Check's holistic lifestyle coach, well, Now I'm becoming a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, FDN, and putting this information all together. And with Bob Siebehor's metabolic efficiency training program, he really teaches all this as well. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about if you're trying to train for an endurance event, Ironman, marathon, long distance cycling event, century ride, trail run, we need to teach you how to be fat adapted. You need to teach your body how to depend on fat for fuel. What I find is most people are still going by old information that we didn't have the research back then and no one really looked at how to use fat for fuel. We're just looking at how to be more efficient and keeping energy going by keep refueling with carbohydrates. That we should be burning fat. How do you become a fat oxidizer? And what we've talked for years on this podcast is about training by heart rate making sure kind of in that max heroic function heart rate that Maffetone taught us long time ago and staying below that number. So that's that 180 minus your age plus five beats if you've been healthy and fit training well minus five beats if you've had any injury or illness and the keep as is if you're just starting. And then what you're eating obviously is a big thing and I wrote another blog the other week that it's not just what you're eating, but how you're eating it and when you are eating it. So that's a whole nother topic about intermittent fasting and balancing macronutrients to keep your blood sugar level so we avoid those insulin surges. So I know a lot of people that train for endurance events, they might be fit, but they're unhealthy on the inside. We want to look at the cellular level. So if you go into Other topics that we can dive into more on the show on Tuesday is mitochondrial health. And most of us, because we're doing chronic exercise, chronic cardio, longer than 45 minutes, we tend to increase our stress levels, increase the cortisol levels. We're also living life as a race and just doing too much every day. So that's increasing our stress in our body. So our mitochondria get fatigued and that's some other shows we're going to talk about as mitochondria rescue is a podcast coming up soon and then dr sarah myhill in the uk also talks about mitochondria dysfunction and chronic fatigue and how it relates to hpa access and your thyroids glands so we need to look at the whole picture and to keep on the topic today of how you gain weight instead of lose weight, training and racing for endurance events. Well, one I just said, training by heart rate is really important, but also not just doing the low, slow heart rate. I think we need to add, when appropriate, HIT training, high intensity interval training, and avoid the black hole training that staying in that long workout, staying in that yellow zone, we say in my zone, the, you know, the 80% heart rate instead we want to go low or go high and do hit training that you go up to 90 percent we recover until you're back down and that's 60 70 percent and then go hard again 
most people just do too much black hole training, which is going to lead to a lot of stress on your body. So we don't want to train wrong, but we want to get stronger, get fitter, get faster, be able to cross the finish line in your next Ironman or marathon or trail run. So we want to look at what we're eating during day-to-day food planning, as well as before you work out and during your workout and afterwards. So why do people look heavy when they're in these endurance events? Why don't people lose weight? One, I think a lot of people nutritionally eat more than they should. They think, oh, hall pass, I just biked four hours. I can go eat whatever I want. Hall pass, and then the next day, maybe you go for, you train for triathlon, maybe you, you work out, you do a long run. And then again, you give yourself a hall pass to eat whatever you want. So what I want you to think about is the quality of food you're eating. Ideally organic, because we've got way too many toxins in our food and you can learn all sorts of information coming out from glyphosate, from the toxins sprayed on our food and our environment, from Roundup, and we really want to get organic food. Eat in season. Don't eat berries in the winter time when they're coming from different countries. Wait to eat seasonally. And I just heard a, a great podcast with Ben Greenfield and Dr. Dan Pompa. It was actually a year old, but I just happened to have it on my phone. And it was about Dr. Dan was talking about eating seasonally, which makes so much sense that it's not eating one way. If you're paleo, keto, if you're still eating a lot of carbohydrates, whatever works for you. I always say is individual. It's genetics. It's your ancestry, background. What region of the world are you coming from? What foods your body wants? Your microbiome and your tolerance to stress, your different genetic markers make a difference. So what we eat, the main goal is to eat real food, organic, in season, local, and the right ratio of carbs, protein, and fat that keep your blood sugar balanced. So we do not have insulin being released from the pancreas to bring our blood sugar back down, which often our blood sugar goes too low, and then we have a low blood sugar eat again and get on this blood sugar roller coaster. So I would think about what you're eating on your next meal and not just eat whatever. I sometimes summarize it as garbage in, garbage out. You know, if you're going to eat crappy food, your workouts, your recovery, everything's going to be impacted. So you are what you eat. Also, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. It's a common quote I say and I hear from other people. And I think that's what happens a lot of times when we're doing endurance training. We tend to eat whatever. And I know a lot of endurance athletes are still following a very high carbohydrate diet. So that would mean you're more of a sugar burner and you're not a fat-adapted athlete. And that's my goal in my coaching program that I'm focusing on building is coaching people to be metabolically efficient athletes, which means you're fat adapted, burning fat for fuel and less dependence on carbohydrates, which in result, you end up eating less on your workouts. You don't need to eat as frequently and your body is a lot healthier because you're reducing that stress that you're putting on your cells, oxidative stress on your body and your mitochondria are a little bit happier as well when we start adding these good intervals and different hormetic stressor exercises that we can do that Dr. Mercola talks about and Dr. Pompa and Ben Greenfield and Ari at the Energy Blueprint and Dr. Myhill, you hear all this information. So to summarize, you want to add that hit training, as I said, but doing infrared sauna, doing cold plunge pools, doing intermittent fasting and eating in a time-restricted window, doing some keto cyclical eating. So you're getting refeeding with high carbohydrates probably on the weekends when we're doing more distance, longer workouts, maybe you're eating more higher carbohydrates, and then you eat less carbohydrates and more higher fat and good proteins during the week. And Looking at DNA Fit, I've been a 
coach for them this last year and they just redid their website and their genetic markers and they have it for your fitness and your nutrition but also your stressors as well as detoxification so then we can put all this information together to figure out what you need to eat to become a fat burning machine but also looking at improving your performance and the big picture working on our aging process our longevity so the next thing we want to look at is if you can get metabolic efficiency testing on a treadmill or bike doing that is really important i think and doing a resting metabolic test that is great to do it is harder to find people that are able to do metabolic efficiency testing because it is expensive to get those carts cost about thirty thousand dollars so it's a little bit of a investment for us uh, coaches to do that but i really want to get one myself and start building that practice back up okay so next thing on my list is intermittent fasting so the more you train the body to eat in a certain window so say five hour window to eight hour window and then so that'd be time restricted eating then the rest of the day overnight you're having fasting time so your body's able to digest repair and renew itself so what dr mccullough talks a lot about lately and lots of other people is stop eating earlier before bed which will help improve your bed your sleep and you'll be able to not worry about digesting your food while you're sleeping and storing that energy that you don't need into fat cells. Instead, if you stop eating three hours before bed, they say that you can more easily intermittent fast overnight. So say I go to bed at eight o'clock, I get up early, say I like to go to bed by eight. I actually go in at around 7.30 and read a half hour before so. And then, I need to stop eating by 5 p.m. And I'll try this during weekdays, do a 16 hour overnight fast to longer some days because I just don't like eating before I go for a morning workout or eating before I go for my swim workout at lunchtime because I can't have food in my stomach. doesn't taste too good when I'm swimming to uh, have that food come up. <laughs> so what I would try for you if you've never done intermittent fasting, if you are a carb burner and you're not losing weight training, let's start with baby steps. So I would suggest if I was coaching you to start with a 12 hour fast. My first step would be stop eating earlier before bed. So if you go to bed at 10, don't eat after 7 p.m. And then you can restart or break your fast the next day about you know try to do 12 hours or more so for me i do a little bit longer because i i don't eat when i'm working and let's try to go start with 12 hours and build up 16 hours and then on the flip side you end up being eating in a certain window so your body doesn't have to be digesting all day long there are old school ways of eating breakfast lunch dinner snack snack to keep our metabolism going which i always thought was bogus didn't make sense to me ever and now this makes sense to me that we should eat with a time restricted eating window so five hours for me eight hours to 12 hours if you're just starting and train your body to eat in a smaller window so it has more time to digest, repair, and recover and rebuild. Now I can do this if I just start eating about 11 in the morning. I have my black coffee in the morning. I do put a splash of cream in it I, and some cinnamon. But I can drink coffee and lots of water and have some electrolytes in my water in the morning. And once I, I'm busy, I don't, I'm not even hungry and I can go work out easy run I can do easy swim and still be okay but that takes time so if you're a carb burner it might take you a few weeks or a month to switch over to become a fat burner so that's what we day it might do my 30-day total transformation program is teach you how to switch over to be more metabolically efficient so time restricted eating intermittent fasting eating real food organic in season 
and food, the macronutrient, the ratio of your carbs, protein, fat that balance your blood sugar. Now, how do you know if your blood sugar is balanced or if you have insulin resistance, which they say most of us do nowadays because of our high carb foods we've eaten over the years, high sugar intake. Well, you can easily buy a blood sugar kit as Keto Mojo and test your blood sugar in the morning. And Dr. McCullough talks in his books about having it test, test your blood sugar for the 30 days two or three times a day. So do it in the morning, do it after your big meal, and maybe do it again in the evening. Now going back to that time-restricted eating, I have people in my program, especially my five-day jumpstart, eat, which I didn't know until later. This is called OMAD, one meal a day. So if you're waiting to eat, as I just ate, let's see, at 2.33 o'clock, I didn't get home until 2 o'clock and I hadn't eaten yet, and then my meal was about 2.33 o'clock. I stopped eating and I'm going to have some bone broth now and I'll stop eating by 5 o'clock. So to me, when I eat my main big meal, and it's not a little diet plate. I think a lot of people think they still need to eat like a piece of lettuce and, you know, a, a thumbprint of, uh, say, um, pesto and then have some two nuts, three nuts, which you have to watch your nut intake, or I do at least, <laughs> that you have your protein, just a little size. Well, fill that plate up with vegetables or make a big bowl and have a colorful salad or grill or stir fry and make some big thing of vegetables with the healthy protein, grass-fed fish you can get, grass-fed beef and or animal protein and then wild caught fish, free range eggs, chicken. I just had some eggs and I put them on top of my vegetables today and then had threw some nuts on top and some pesto and olive oil, sea salt and having a cup of bone broth and I'm actually full and then I won't be hungry the rest of the night. So for me, that's easy way to get my fasting in overnight. Another topic I think people don't lose weight is the microbiome. So if you listen to my podcast I've done with Karan of the Microbiome Labs talks about LPS, the toxic bacteria that can seep out of your gut and it will be stored as toxins are into your fat cells and it'll make you swell, your fat cells swell, he explained in our last interview. And most people, he says, have leaky gut of some level and so does Dr. Tom Bryan talked a lot about this in his different interviews, that leaky gut is something we work on too. So if you're not losing weight, you're training for endurance events, intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, balanced nutrient, food intake, one meal a day, maybe a smaller meal, bone broth, and then work on your gut health, your microbiome. So we use Megaspore supplement that you can take two, build up to two with your meal. And we do that for a month. And then month two, we use the prebiotic drink mix that you can add during the day. And that helps feed your gut bacteria. And then the third ingredient in their total gut restoration program is a mucosal layer type of drink. It helps rebuild your gut wall line in the mucosa layer. So if you watch our video with Karan or find any videos with him, he's just amazing. Megaspore supplements, their total gut restoration program, and the company's microbiome labs, and he is the chief scientist. So he is the brilliant guy to listen to on the microbiome. Now, stopping eating before bed, I would start with that this week. Maybe take baby steps. So goal, you go to bed by 10, hopefully, not later than that, and stop eating three hours before bed. So no eating after seven o'clock. And what I would look at too is what you're doing before bed. If your sleep is erratic, if you're not able to fall asleep, maybe you wake up middle of the night, that's another topic, but that's really important too to make your sleep a priority. If you want to let your body do its internal housekeeping while you're sleeping, I don't want you going to bed at midnight being on your computer or social media for hours before then. So that's just kind of a short summary. Metabolic efficiency is really important for endurance athletes, and that's not just training low heart rates and doing more HIIT training and staying out of the black hole zones, but also what you're eating, how you're eating it, and when you're eating it. So I didn't actually talk about how you're eating it, so I'll finish with that topic. 
when you're eating, I said in that time restrictive feeding window, say eight hours, starting with that 12 and 12 intermittent fast, time restricted eating, what you're eating, we talked a little bit about, but how you are eating. Most people eat way too fast. They often rush, they're multitasking, they're not focused, they're just eating really quickly so they can move on to the next thing. Well, life is not a race, people, it's a journey. And if you want to digest your food correctly and get those nutrients and break down those foods properly into your gut and into your body to give you energy, well, stop, pause, and reset before you start eating. Take three deep breaths in, slowly out through your nose, and unplug. Don't do 10 things at once. Do one thing, and that's eat. (laughs) Chew your food 20, 30 times very slowly and just relax. Eating is a parasympathetic nervous system activity. We've got two nervous systems, automatic nervous system, rest and digest, fight or flight. Rest and digest. Digest means parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're eating in sympathetic dominance or you're a sympathetic dominant person and you're in that fight or flight mode all day long, you're probably having some digestive issues not eating your food, not feeling full because you're overriding that feel, feeling full, the leptin and ghrelin hormones that give you satiety and fullness and, and you're just not even tasting your food. So what you eat, how you eat, and when you eat. Think of that. If you want to burn fat, you need to become metabolically efficient, fat-adapted athlete. We need to switch over what you're eating. Those ratio of macronutrients, we usually need to get rid of those vegetable oils and processed foods and refined sugars and get more quality, clean food in season organic. And we want to make sure we are training correctly. And that includes your sleeping, your recovery, and your repair cycle. I would add some good hormetic stressor activities as the infrared sauna using more near infrared is what Dr. Mercola and I just had an interview with sauna space still come out this week as well and learning about that far mid and near infrared it's sweating out the toxins so another topic about detoxification and have proper elimination pathways which we do because we're sweating exercising you're peeing and pooping hopefully and breathing right but also having binders to bind, collect those toxins and get them out of your system is really important when you're detoxifying. Because remember, fat cells store your toxins. So once you become fat adapted, you are going to be losing weight. And when you're losing weight, you're probably releasing those toxins in your body. So lots of information on that from Dr. Dan Pompa. Mike Mutzel might have some info on that. And Dr. Mercola has a whole book. His keto fasting is all about the toxins in your food and our environment that we need to make sure we take a binder. So something like bentonite clay, chlorella, I think it's chlorella, and then activated charcoal. Dr. Pompa had some supplements on his side I was looking at after listening to his interview with Ben Greenfield about binders. So Anyways, hopefully that gives you a quick summary. If you want more information, you can contact me for consultation. I do hourly coaching calls or 30 to 90 day coaching programs to train the whole athlete to become a fat burning machine, optimize your health and improve performance as well as longevity. So we start working on what you're eating, how you're eating, when you're eating, how you're training, your sleep, your digestion, and a little bit of everything, but we pick one thing at a time so we're not uh, overwhelming you (laughs) so we have the most success. So if you want more information on me and my coaching programs and blog and different past podcasts, you can find the archives because we talked about metabolically efficiency training way back in 2011 when we started with Fit Fat Fast. Now metabolic flexibility and efficiency is big right now. And you can go back in our archives, find all that and more on debbiepotts.net. So that's all for today's edition of Real Thoughts with Debbie Potts. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd love to know you're listening and I'm helping you and follow my mission, my purpose about helping athletes transform into peak performers and improve that aging process. So 
DebbiePotts.net. You can reach out to me and let me know if you want to come on the show sometime and share your story and we can just chat and inspire other people. All right, guys, please follow me on Instagram, The Holistic Athlete, and also you can find more on Facebook, The Whole Athlete Podcast page itself. All right, until then, train smartly, get that heart rate monitor out, and let's work on eating foods that are in season and local. Enjoy, slow down, and take time to reset, reset and reboot the whole you from the inside out. Thanks for listening to The Whole Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at wholeathletepodcast.com. You can help us continue and grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and see you next time.